register 3 and it stores the result into register 0. And then it takes that result and it stores it back into the original memory address. And so it's taking your stock count, subtracting 1, and overwriting uh, the previous stock count. So if we want to write a code that messes with this, um, we need to remember this uh, memory address. Um, the one where it actually subtracts the stop count. The stop count. So you can right click this and copy address and it'll copy that address. Um, take notes in notepad. Um, So say we want to write a code where when you die, it, it adds to this dot count instead. And as 423 predicted, we are more or less just going to change this to from subtract immediate to add immediate. Um, but we need to figure out how to do that in machine code, because um, if we actually, we can visit, we can visit this address. Um, Hold on, let me let me go back to this address right here. Like this is this um this instruction is stored in a memory address. So we can actually go over to memory and we can look at this address. And this shows us like uh where was it? This shows us the machine code for that particular instruction. 3803 FFFF. And as I mentioned before, like the machine code is very cryptic. And like, although like you can take lengths to understand it, there's not really any point because we have a program that will uh, take our assembly and convert it into machine code for us. So let's go back to Notepad, and the program is called ASM Weird. I mentioned it before. Um, this is what it looks like. So I can I can take our address. Hold on. Let me just bring up Notepad again. This is this is the um, the function or the instruction that we started with. So I can put that in, and when I click this right arrow, um, ignore. By the way, for for the time being, ignore like the rest of this stuff. But we can see right here, three eight zero three fffff. That's the exact um, instruction that we saw in in Dolphin's memory. So we know that like this is the Wait, what do you mean wrong address? Or were you talking to him? Oh, never mind. Um, so, oh yeah, and I ignore this up here too. That We're going to use that feature later. But right now we just want to do a, a literal translation of assembly into machine code. So what we want to do is, in, in this case, just messing around, we want to add a stock when you die instead. So I'm going to take subtract immediate and turn it into add immediate. So it's going to add 1 to R3 and it's going to store the result in R0. Click that button and here is our new line of code. Uh, go back to Notepad. <clears throat> so now we're going to use our 04 code again, which again it takes whatever you put at at Y and it stores it into the memory address X. So the memory address that we want to change is actually a line of code, and that belongs to this address. So I'm going to put in 040333d44. And what do we want to put there? We want to put our new line of code that adds instead of subtracts. So this is our code. And what this code does is it literally modifies the game's the game's code that that specific instruction to add instead of subtract like before we were actually modifying like values in memory but now we're actually modifying the game's code uh with the with this code right here so i'm going to copy this go to uh go to melee's uh config file here and I'm going to disable the player 2 damage code. And uh, let's see. D 
dying adds a stock instead. That'll be the name of our code. Turn it on and paste the code. And again, add this extra line at the bottom of the file. Arcolith asks, why am I using an 04 code instead of a C2 code? Um, C2 codes inject our own uh, our own code into the game. So if I want to like add my own code function that does something out like that uh, does you know whatever I want to do, then I can use a C2 code. Um, but in this case, I'm literally just I'm only modifying one line of code, and so I can use an 04 code to just modify that one line of code. But say I wanted to do something more advanced, like if your stock count hits zero, then reset it to five, and then write it to the memory address or something. Like, if I need to write a whole bunch of lines of assembly, then I would use a C2 code um, in order to fit all that in. But for the time being, I'm only changing one line of code, so I'm using 04. I'll actually be using a C2 code later, um, and so you can get like an understanding of that. Um, but anyway, so we have our code. And I'm just give me a second. I want to load up non debug dolphin. So we get like regular performance again. Um, and hopefully, XSplit will cooperate. So let's load up melee. And before I even like go and test the code, I can I can go to that address, um, which we found by putting it in here, and you can see that you can see that like this address, which was previously subtract, it's now add. So it's adding one to R3 and storing it into R0. So even now, like, we can see that our, the changes that we made to the code are reflected in Dolphin. So let's test that out real quick. Let's restart the game. So let me die, and if all goes well, instead of having two stocks, I should have four. There we go. So we've successfully found the line of code that subtracts from your stock count, and we modified it to add to your stock count instead. And I can keep doing this, and I'll just continually increase my stock. So that's pretty awesome, and it, it demonstrates, like, just how much control we have over the game. We can we can look at the game's code, although possibly difficult to understand. You know, depending on depending on the circumstances, and we can make changes to it, and um, we can add to it as well, which I will be demonstrating next. Actually, our next code is going to be fun. Um, but let me stop this. And if anyone has any questions, you can ask them now. <clears throat> oh, if, if your stock goes over 99, um, one byte of data can store a value up to 255. So if you go over 99, then chances are, like, your graphic, like, your stock count will be displayed as 99, but it'll actually be higher than that, and it just won't be reflected in the graphic, because I'm pretty sure the graphic is only programmed to go to 99 and not any higher. Um... And yeah, like if you eventually hit, um, if you eventually hit 255, and then you add one more stock using this code, then it'll probably overflow back to zero, and you will lose.
So G Master is asking, how would you go about putting these codes into an actual brawl game? Or melee game, I guess, like on the Wii. Um, <clears throat> you need, well, most of the time you need a modded Wii to do this. Um, or just a way of loading like a homebrew application. In the case of Project M, you can either have homebrew or we use an exploit in Brawl's stage builder to crash the game and execute our own homebrew code. Um, but you can use Gecko OS, which is a homebrew application for the Wii. And this allows you to write a file to your SD card which has these sorts of codes in it. And when you start the game using Gecko, it um, it starts the game with these codes that you specify in a similar way to what I'm doing with Dolphin. Um, alternatively, um, if you load your games with a USB loader, um, most USB loaders have um, this option too. For example, a configurable USB loader. If you load up the game and you go into the settings, there's something, they usually call it Ocarina Cheats. Um, it's generally not called Ocarina Cheats anymore, it's either called Gecko or Weird. Um, but you just enable that, and if you have your codes file in the right spot and in the right format, um, then uh, it will properly load up, and you can launch your game with these codes. Um, and I think there is a there's a program called like Ocarina Code Manager or something like that, which makes it easy to write these files. So you can you can find tutorials for that online, um, but I won't be explicitly going over that in this stream. So. Anyway, let's move on. Um, the question is what else? Because we've done a lot so far. We've written codes that modify memory. We've written codes that modify the actual game's code. Um, and so you can already see that we have a lot of power in our hands. But what we're going to do next is we're actually going to write our own code and we're going to inject it into the game. Um, doing this is a very powerful thing because instead of just like changing tiny little things like in that case we subtracted where we added a stock instead of subtracting the stock that's just changing one line of code but we can add like an indefinite lines of code uh, to the game ourselves and make much larger changes like in the case of some of the codes that you see in project M uh, the ones that I made like stage striking or stock control um, I have to write a lot of my own assembly code to accomplish those things and that's what we'll be going over I'm only going to do a very simple example in this stream. Possibly in the future, I'll go over some more complex ones. Um, but you can already, we've been running for a long time now, so um, I'm going to stick with like a simple example that just explains the basics for the time being. And that will be our last demo. We're going to write our own assembly. Um, and for this, we're actually going to be uh, we're not doing this with Smash, actually. We're going to be playing Sonic Adventure 2 Battle for GameCube. Um, I love this game, and I was messing around with it last night, and I discovered something interesting that I thought would be a very good example for this. Um, and so, that's what we're going to be doing. So what I want to explore in this game is I want to figure out exactly what decides to load certain characters into certain stages, you know? Like if you load up like a Sonic stage, what negotiates what loads Sonic into that stage? If you load up a Knuckles stage, like what negotiates putting Knuckles in there? Uh, so we're going to have a little fun with loading different characters into different stages and, and see what we can come up with. Um, I have a save state prepared. just on the character select screen, it really doesn't matter, I could have just gone there. But anyway, um, so what I need to figure out is, um, I'm going to be using cheat search, like I was before, because I need to figure out, like, some spot in memory that is, like, a character ID. Like, when I load a stage, uh, 
I want to find something in memory that um, that specifies.